This is PG278Q and the PG279Q. They're both 27 inches, 2560 by 1440, and support high refresh rates. We've got 144 and 165 hertz, uh, respectively. And also, they both support G Sync and NVIDIA 3D Vision. The main difference, though, is the type of panel they use. On the left, the 279Q uses an IPS or in plane switching panel, whereas on the right, the 278Q uses a TN or twisted pneumatic panel. So, with both monitors set to the same brightness, contrast, and color settings, uh, let's start with the differences in color. You can see the TN on the right has a sort of cooler pinkish tint perhaps to the whites, whereas the IPS on the left produces a more natural warmer white. With Photoshop open there is a marked difference between the grey colours, with the IPS producing darker more uniform colours compared to the slightly washed out greys of the TM. If we take a look at the picture of the mountain landscape, and if you focus on the sky at the top, the difference is quite noticeable, they are producing very different shades of blue. But which is correct? Which is more accurate? Well, surprisingly, both of these monitors have true 8-bit panels, which means that they can both display up to 16.7 million colors. And this is actually quite rare for a TN panel, as most only have a 6-bit color depth uh, and use a technology called frame rate control or dithering to simulate more colors and match the depth of true native 8-bit panels. So with an 8-bit panel, the PG278Q is one of the best TN monitors you can buy, and it also means we're getting a good, proper, fair comparison between a great TN and a great IPS monitor. Monitor. However, it also means that since most TNs aren't as good as this one and do use 6-bit panels and dithering, there will be a bigger difference, a bigger gap, uh, if you will, in colour accuracy and quality between those TNs and a good IPS. Now, according to the guys at TFT Central who have fancy spectro photometers and colorometers and things, both monitors are excellent in terms of colour accuracy, but surprisingly the TN model uh, scored better with an almost perfect sRGB colour score, which is incredible for a TN monitor and even beat the IPS, uh, which was a few percent out of the uh, Gamma and Kelvin targets. So what's going on here if both monitors are excellent? Why can we still see a difference in the colour? Well, let's look at the contrast ratio, which is the difference between the darkest black and the whitest white that the monitor can produce. Now, ACES claim that both monitors can uh, produce a 1000 to 1 static contrast ratio, but we can't take their word for it. Uh, so in tests at 50% brightness, we found that the IPS one actually had a contrast ratio of 1129 to 1 versus 994 to 1 on the TN. So the IPS does have better contrast and therefore can produce deeper blacks and richer whites. In Fallout 4, for example, you can see the IPS on the left looks much better uh, with deeper blacks and greater contrast compared to the slightly more washed out flat look of the TN. So while contrast is one difference, the bigger issue is with the viewing angles. While the PG278 Q here uh, is excellent, like all TN monitors, it does suffer from pretty terrible viewing angles. So in order to film this TN versus IPS comparison, I positioned the camera between the two monitors which are sat side by side, but even that was far enough away from the center of the TN monitor to distort the colors. But if you're sitting in the perfect sweet spot looking straight on at the TN, it's fine. Uh, but any deviation to the side, you know, above or below, uh, you either get pinky, purple, or yellow hues, and you lose all of that color accuracy. Just look at this. What does it really matter if it's yellow from the side or purple from the top? That's not really where you look at it normally. Well, of course, it's a bigger issue if you've got a TN display on a laptop or a tablet, since they are mobile devices, uh, and you're going like, to more likely view them from different angles. But on a desktop monitor, uh, you're pretty much always going to sit dead center of it anyway. But if you do look at it a few degrees off center, it really does alter the color quite significantly. So, so I think most creative professionals and photo and video editors will want to stay clear of TN panels. For everyone else, though, assuming you do sit right in front of it and you do buy a good quality TN monitor like this one, uh, it can still look great, particularly in games. If the TN and the IPS weren't side by side, I think you'd struggle to see the difference. So we've established we can have color accurate TN models, even if the 8-bit TN panels are a bit rare, but their viewing angles do let them down. But there is more to the story though, what about response times? One of the biggest selling points of TN monitors is they have a lower or shorter response time, which is how long it takes for a displaced pixel to go from either black to white, or more commonly grey to grey, which is described as G2G. Companies will claim a monitor like the PG278Q here has a one millisecond response time, 
Uh, and of course, shorter response times help reduce things like ghosting, which is particularly uh, obvious in fast-paced games where you see blur on moving objects. But what companies rarely tell you is the monitor's input lag, which is also known as the signal processing delay, which is basically the delay between clicking your mouse or pressing a button on the keyboard and seeing uh, what, you've, you know, what you've pressed happen on the screen. This is what gives you the feel of lag rather than the potential ghosting effect you get with longer response times. The trouble is though, monitors could have super fast one millisecond response times, but a relatively high 20, maybe 30, 40 millisecond input lag, for example. So you need to know both times to get a good idea of how responsive the monitor is gonna be. Tests have shown that this TM monitor uh, actually had a combined response time and input lag of about four milliseconds, uh, whereas surprisingly, the IPS had a lower combined lag of 3.25 milliseconds. But even though the IPS appears to be slightly faster uh, in this combined test, in reality, uh, you really couldn't tell the difference between these two monitors. You just simply wouldn't be able to tell the difference between three or four milliseconds. It's too uh, insignificant. But remember, these are two of the best monitors you can buy, and obviously every monitor is different. So if you're on the fence between IPS and TN, and you're worried that uh, going for the IPS will result in more lag or more ghosting, just do a little research and check what the uh, monitor's real-world average response time is, and importantly, the input lag is before you come to a decision. One issue that does plague IPS monitors though is what they call backlight bleed or IPS glow, uh, which is uh, often seen in the corners of the monitor. It can be anything from uh, sort of just a trivial little bit of uh, light in the corners to a full on distracting brightness uh, all around the screen. It's a bit of a lottery as well because you could buy the same one twice and one has really bad light bleed, one has almost none. It's sort of an issue with the manufacturing process. There are lots of benefits to IPS monitors, but backlight bleed is something you just have to put up with for now at least. It just comes with the technology. Now let's round this up by talking about the features and prices. One of the big reasons to go with a TN uh, is you can get models that support 120 and even 144 hertz refresh rates. This makes everything uh, from opening uh, files on a desktop to playing games feel faster and look way smoother. If you've ever used a high refresh monitor and gone back to a basic 60 hertz one after, you know it's a pretty big difference. The good news though is that IPS monitors have caught up. So now there's a decent amount of high refresh IPS monitors too, like this one. The Asus PG279 q uh, is IPS and supports up to 165 hertz refresh rate which puts the 144 hertz on the TN here to shame although you couldn't really tell the difference between that. It's not just refresh rates either the IPS monitor also supports G-Sync and Nvidia 3D Vision just like its TN brother so we don't have to choose between a boring old professional 60 hertz IPS monitor or a gamer focused high refresh uh, rate G-Sync TN monitor anymore we can get the best of both worlds for a price. As I say, the Asus rep told me that these monitors are sold side by side. The 9Q isn't necessarily the sequel to the 8Q, and even though there are some cosmetic changes, the 9Q uh, has a 21 hertz faster, higher refresh rate, uh, and um, it's also got built-in speakers. Aside from that, they're basically identical. The biggest difference is that the 9Q is IPS and the 8Q is TN. So what's the price difference? How much extra are we paying for IPS? Well, right now on Amazon, the TN model is about £520 or $675, whereas the IPS is 695 pounds or 800 dollars is it really worth paying an extra 175 pounds or 125 dollars for ips well that's up to you in fact the idea of paying 520 pounds in the first place even for the tn monitor is probably uh, kind of ridiculous for most people anyway uh, but for me though if i was going to spend that sort of money i would probably bite the bullet and go for the top end 27 9q uh, for the ips display because i use my monitors for work and for gaming so i do appreciate uh, ips when it comes to uh, video editing and color correcting and photos. But what about you? Let me know in the comments where you stand on the IPS versus TN debate and whether you'd pay the extra to get an IPS monitor. So I hope you found this TN versus IPS comparison with the Asus PG278Q and the Asus PG27.